Hey everyone, I'm Sid and I'm a third year medical student uh, studying in Bulgaria, in Sofia, and I generally just want to give a full guide to anyone who wants to study medicine in Europe or specifically in Bulgaria. I'm just going to go through a rundown of all the different things uh, you need to know, uh, my experiences uh, so far studying here in Bulgaria and uh, yeah so let's just get into the video so firstly why should you study medicine in bulgaria so for me it was after i finished my neuroscience degree i couldn't manage to secure a place in the uk and so the next place was bulgaria um, the reason why i came here is i knew a friend who studied med here and so that's one of the reasons why i came and secondly the the qualification that you get the md uh, which is equivalent to the MBBS uh, in the UK is a recognized qualification so that means when you come back to the UK you can work and practice as a doctor and even if you don't want to go to the UK you can go to the States um, do the USMLE and work there or Australia or anywhere you essentially want and a lot of the people in my university are uh, you know British uh, we've got a few Americans, a lot of Canadians and mostly other Europeans like Germans and Greeks and those sorts of people. Uh, the university fees are slightly cheaper compared to the UK. It's about 8,000 euros per year uh, when I started. I think it's now 9,000 euros. So for like the whole year, I pay about 7,000 pounds. Um, and there generally is a lower cost of living as well. So the rent's cheaper day-to-day um, -day groceries uh, things like that taxis are significantly cheaper uh, I mean I can get a taxi to the airport and it, it costs about 20 levs which is about 10 quid uh, compared to London where I live it's extortionate and yeah they do offer medicine in English so that's something to look forward to I guess um, it's not medicine in Bulgarian um, as you might think so what's the process of actually applying to a university in Europe, such as uh, the Medical University of Sofia or Plovdiv, etc. Um, essentially, there are a two ways you can go about this. One is you can apply through an agency who handle all your paperwork or two, which is you do everything yourself. I wouldn't recommend doing everything yourself. Just go through an agency. So there are a few different ones. I came with Interhex. There's, I think, Study Medicine Europe. Um, but essentially, yes, it does cost quite a few thousand pounds to go through those agency. I think it's like two or three thousand um, pounds. I mean, I don't know what the prices are. Uh, I don't know what the prices are as of now. Um, but essentially what the agencies do is they help you sort out your visas, the application to the university, all those um, forms etc they essentially help you do all of that because when you are applying to these universities it is going to be in the language of the country so all the forms and it's quite tricky to go through all of this and there's a lot of documents you need to get legalized notarized apostled etc so they are a huge help when it comes to applying to um, you know medicine or any sort of course you want in Europe now what are the requirements when I applied the requirements were for A levels you have you had to have done biology and chemistry but then again I've heard of some people not even having A levels uh, but I think just to give yourself a better opportunity is to have bio and chem as A levels and of course GCSEs um, you don't really need anything else other than that and when you do apply to these universities so for Sofia there is an entrance exam um, and there are three components to that entrance exam so there's an English uh, a biology and a chemistry part of the exam um, and they're very very straightforward easy to answer questions but the only thing I would say is that there has been a lot of competition so um, you know it's probably not super easy to get admissions uh, as you would like five years ago just because loads of people are thinking of doing this so in those entrance exams you really need to get the best grade you can and you know like when I say the best grade I mean you can only get like one answer or one question wrong um, because it's just going to be a problem if you've got like a few wrong and then that puts you in a lower ranking and then the top 50 students are granted um, 
an offer to study whilst you're going to have to look at alternative pathways into studying medicine. So life as a med student, uh, I mean you have lectures and seminars. Now lectures are standard as you would expect in the UK. Um, they are not mandatory, you don't have to go to them, but seminars on the other hand are like a compulsory lesson. Um, you have them scheduled throughout the week for your different modules. For example, in first year, you would have a seminar for medical biology and medical physics, etc. And you have to go to them. Um, otherwise, you get absences because the professors, they mark your attendance. And, you know, you can't have a lot of absences. I think it's maximum of two absences per semester. So if you have any more, you have to either, you know, one, make up a replacement during that week. Uh, for that class with a different professor or at the end of the semester you're going to have to pay for those missed classes because if you don't pay then they won't register you for the exams um, which is a bit annoying you don't have that much freedom in terms of going away studying by yourself uh, because you know you have to attend these seminars and well these seminars are for like the first three years so years one to three are your preclinical departments um, and so when you study uh, for the subjects there, you have seminars, you have lectures and then once you start from year four and onwards uh, up until year six, uh, year four is typically that's when your placements will begin. So you don't have seminars, you just pretty much wear your scrubs, go to the hospital um, on your rotation. Um, and uh, yeah, but I mean, you still have to get signed off showing that you were there. And I'm sure like if you are a med student, you would go to the hospital for your placements. I don't see why not, because that's the fun part, right? Um, oh yeah, one more thing I was going to say is once you graduate from a European university such as MUS, when you go back to the UK, you can apply to work as a F2 doctor. Uh, you don't have to do F1 again because as part of the sixth year, that is F1 in itself. So yeah, once you come back, you can just go straight into F2. Or if you don't feel comfortable, you can do F1 again, uh, but that just entirely depends on you. I personally probably wouldn't do F1 again. I just go straight into F2 locoming or something like that just to earn a bit of money um, because for the last six years, you've just been, uh, you know, cashing out on, your studies and everything else so yeah that's just one thing to keep in mind but yeah that's pretty much applying to medicine uh, abroad in Bulgaria um, you know it's probably similar in other European countries like Turkey or Georgia etc but what I've also done is I've written a few uh, FAQs uh, some questions you guys might uh, ask um, and I'm just gonna answer them as I go through them so question number one is, is the degree recognized internationally? Can I practice in my home country after graduating? Yes, you can. Uh, and you can check for proof of that if you go to the GMC website and look at accredited medical schools, you will see that Medical University of Sofia or whatever medical university you are applying to is on there. Um, I'm sure America or Canada has some sort of um, medical council that will verify and recognize uh, universities across the world. Uh, second question is, what is the quality of medical education like in Bulgaria? And now I'm gonna be honest, it's not amazing. The university isn't great, uh, but it, it, it's decent. You learn a lot. And if you genuinely do have a passion for medicine, you will enjoy it for sure. The subjects, some of them can be a bit tedious like biophysics or medical physics. Uh, but once you, I'd say, start, I'd say once you start second year, that's when you'll start to enjoy it. When you have subjects like physiology and especially in third year, when you have internal medicine and general surgery, when you're going to the hospitals, interacting with patients, taking patient histories, um, diagnosing, that sort of stuff. Um, but what was the question again? What is the quality of medical education? Um, yeah, so I mean, it, don't expect anything like the UK because it's not. Um, but it, it, it's okay. Thirdly, how competitive is it to get into medical universities in Bulgaria? I remember when I applied, it wasn't super competitive. I mean, it still was, but I think now it's uh, really, really competitive. It is quite, not. I wouldn't say difficult because it's not difficult. It's just, I mean, there are a lot of people applying to the same university, so it is quite competitive. 
Uh, next question is, when should I start applying and what are the deadlines? Uh, normally, I mean, the earlier you apply, the better, but a lot of people, what they do is when they find out they didn't get the A-level grades for their UK universities for medicine, you or what they do is they just apply directly after a level results day the sooner you apply the better because then it's just it's it's a lot of paperwork it's a lot of hassle um especially uh with these agencies um because there's a lot you have to do in like beforehand so i remember when i applied it was in february um and the semester actually begins in uh, October for first year students. Next is, are there any scholarships or financial aid options available? Uh, sadly, no. As a UK citizen, a British citizen, we don't get any financial aid. So every year you are literally going to have to pay, well, every semester, you are going to have to pay the semester fees, which is about three and a half grand, give or take. Um, so no, scho no scholarships, no financial aid. So it's just pretty much you and your you on your own. Next, uh, are there any hidden costs? Yes, uh, textbooks. You have to buy textbooks for certain subjects and uh, they can be quite expensive. Um, usually you also need a lab coat, but depending, with, depending on what agency you came with, they will hook you up with one. Um, and yeah, I mean, mostly it's just textbooks. They are quite expensive. How diverse is the student population? It is pretty diverse. There are a lot of UK um, students coming in. There's a lot of Germans and Greeks and other Europeans like Italians and Turkish, etc. So it's, yeah, it's really diverse. Uh, I mean, you have people who joined first year who are like 27, 28. So it, it is pretty diverse. Um, what kind of accommodation is available? Now, it's not like uh, universities in the UK where the university gives you your first year accommodation and you're living on campus, etc. When you come, you are going to have to sort out your own apartment. So what I did is when I came with my mum, we stayed in the Airbnb for about two weeks. During that time, um, we just found a bunch of estate agents, went around looking at properties, different apartments, something near university. Um, and eventually I found an apartment I really liked and um, yeah that's all it is really it's you finding uh, apartments yourself um, paying the rent there and figuring all of that out as long as you get a good estate agent that should be fine i mean it's not really dodgy or anything like that but yeah there there isn't any sort of student hostels or things like that uh, that i know of anyway um, what is the teaching style? I mean, like I said earlier, there's lectures, there's seminars. Um, I mean, it's just subject uh, specific. Uh, so for example, in cytology, you have the seminar classes where you have uh, microscope slides you have to look at for physiology. It would be, you know, something more practical like taking blood pressure uh, or learning how to read like certain charts or things like that. Those are pretty much the classes. Um, when do the clinical placements start? So uh, like uh, when do you go do ward rounds and things like that? That starts it officially in fourth year, but you do get a bit of that in third year where you actually get to put on the scrubs um, and go to the hospitals and see patients. Um, next is how are the exams structured and how often do they occur? So you have a winter exam period and a, sum a summer semester uh, exam period so the winter exam period you will probably have like one or two or three exams uh, the summer exam period is like the bigger one where it's like four or five different subjects um, and the thing is 90% of the exams um, are oral so like you have to know your stuff because you will sit in front of a bunch of professors um, and they will ask you questions. It's not like you write down on a sheet, hand in your paper, and then like a month later, you get your results online. Um, you literally go to the exam, you pick out your you know syllabus points for that subject. Um, you write, you do write down a bit, but ultimately the professor will call you up uh, and uh, you have a chance to kind of answer their questions. And if they're happy with that, then they will pass you and you get your grade instantly right there. And then, so you know whether you failed the exam 
or not instantly uh, which I prefer to be honest I don't like waiting over summer to figure out like uh, what I got you know so uh, next question is is Bulgaria a safe place for international students uh, yeah definitely I mean I'm from London and I'm very safe in Bulgaria in Sofia um, I could literally put on my headphones go for a walk at like I mean it's it's 6 p.m. now, but I thought it was like 11. But anyway, if it was 11, 12, I could put on my headphones, go for a walk and it's fine. Nothing's gonna happen. Um, and how do I travel around the city and the country? So because you're in Europe, flights are really cheap. I mean, I get flights back to London for like 15 quid, 20 quid, very cheap, very quick. Um, to travel around the city, you can get a student like um, travel pass card thingy and it costs about seven quid in, in pounds, seven quid a month. So you get access to the trams, uh, the buses, um, <clears throat> the metro. So, I mean, it, it is cheap, but yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. I've covered everything pretty much on uh, studying medicine in Bulgaria and what it encompasses. Um, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Uh, I will answer them in the uh, comment section below, but uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one